If it's said twice in the Spirit of God, it's something that needs to be said and heard loud and clear. So um, I'm glad that you guys are here tonight. I'm excited for what God has in store. What an awesome message this morning from Pastor Zach. Um, it was so good, and I'm excited for what God has to talk about distractions. But first, before I cover that, I um, want you to highlight uh, this uh, for you again. Uh, if you didn't get one of these, you need to pick one up. You need to pick up five, uh, everyone for your family. Uh, it's got some awesome resources. And then this week, officially for the uh, middle school and high school, the daily devotional on Thursday. Rest of the church, I'm sure you can start it whenever this week. Uh, but be in the Word every single day. Use this as a guide. It's pretty amazing that um, probably four different generations, maybe even five different generations, uh, will be doing and reading the same Word uh, of God. That's something special about our church that I love. And so please pick up one of these. Uh, you can still get one out in the lobby for this week. Come back tomorrow. Come back Tuesday. Come back Wednesday. God's got something amazing in store um, so why don't we just pray to uh, kind of usher in the spirit. God, we just thank you for tonight. We cut out all distractions. May you speak, may you move, and may we respond to your moving. Open our eyes, uh, open our ears for what you have. We thank you, Jesus, that you're going to meet with us and that you already have. We praise you. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Uh, once again, I'm super excited, and I feel like... Um, Tonight, what, it's, it usually always happens this way that I, I usually preach something that God is preaching and yelling at me, and so he's teaching me through this, and, and it's not always the most fun process to be kind of purified in that way, but uh, I think it's something that's so vital, and hopefully um, the Spirit will speak to you. But at the end of service, I just want to give opportunity uh, for you to respond uh, in any way that you feel led to do. We're going to get more of heaven, and so we are going to have more action moving towards Jesus, more seeking with our, uh, all of our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. I love the promise in Jeremiah that says, if, if you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. Uh, that's, that's an amazing promise, and we're going to do that tonight at the end of service. But uh, I'm talking about distractions. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, distractions? Turn to your neighbor and say, you, are, you just were a distraction to me. If you need to move from somebody right now, no shame, get up and move. You have my permission. But we're talking about distractions and specifically things that can distract us from getting more of heaven in our lives, in our relationships, in our families, at our jobs, in the world. Um, and uh, we live in a culture full of distractions, full of different screens that we have, full of different opportunities, full of full schedules, full of uh, different things that can pull us from left to right, pull our vision and pull our hearing from what God has for us. I, I was doing a little research and something I found out that isn't very exciting, it's actually kind of depressing, is that the average attention span uh, of, of particularly in the United States has gone down over the years. It used to be 12 seconds was our attention span. It's pretty good, 12 seconds. Now, in 2019, it is down to eight seconds. That's your attention span, so. Shortest sermon ever coming at you. Hopefully I can get you focused. But the most depressing thing about this is that a goldfish has an attention span of nine seconds. So if you need to come to the altar right now, it is open. But that's depressing to me. We have an attention span of eight seconds. We're going from here to here. We got phone, iPad, TV screen. We got the Apple Watch. We got everything buzzing, beeping, and pulling our eyes. And if you, uh, uh, the actual word distraction uh, from the Latin is dis, which means apart, and trahere, I probably butchered that, but it means to drag, to drag apart. What a picture of what a distraction does to us. It drags us apart. And um, it, 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 the definition also, it, it means a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to someone or something else. It prevents from giving full attention. That's so powerful, 
and distractions in our life, that's exactly what they do, especially in our Christian walk, in our spiritual relationship with Jesus. It prevents us from giving our full attention. That's what distractions do. They prevent, they hinder, they pull and they drag away what we want and we're called to give in our lives to Jesus. They pull it away. And they, they only can prevent. So distractions, you think of, of, of things that, in a sense, they don't fill you up. That's what a distraction in my mind, something that doesn't fill me up like Jesus could fill me up. We know that we are created with, with a, a, a spirit that wants eternity, that longs for Jesus, that cannot be satisfied but with anything uh, except for Jesus. And so we long for that and we try to fill that void with distractions, but those can't fill us up. Uh, binging shows on Netflix cannot fill you up as much as it may feel like it in the second. Uh, Facebook does not fill you up Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling does not fill you up. Sports, even I would dare to say your job, uh, different relationships cannot fill us up the way that Jesus can. Uh, And that's why we want to turn your 2019 in the right direction for more of heaven, more of Jesus in our lives. And and all those things I listed can be distractions. And in Psalm 101, It says, I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not fasten its grip on me. Worthless things, that's what distractions are. They're worthless to me. They have no worth or value in my life, and yet I choose them. And so I I don't want to just limit distractions to something that uh, could be very good or bad. So I want to just talk about two different types of distractions. And, and, And the first one, is, is given to us by example by Peter in the Bible in Matthew 14. I won't read it word for word, just give you a, a little backstory for the sake of time. Jesus sends his disciples out on the lake and says, go, go across, I'll meet you over there, but I'm gonna take some time to cut the distractions and I'm, I'm gonna seclude myself to pray, uh, giving us the example. And the big storm happens, the disciples are freaked out, Jesus walks on the water into their storm and because they were all scared and freaking out because of their, their storm, they see Jesus as a ghost instead of their savior in the moment. He speaks out to them, don't be afraid, it's me. And then Peter so boldly says, hey, if that's really you, Jesus, call me out there. And we see this amazing miracle of, of the only human, full human, to ever walk on water as he's walking out there and he's living and walking in the power of God and more of heaven, and we notice what? It says he starts to look at the, at the left and the right. He sees the wind, he sees the waves, he sees the storm, and he's distracted by it and he starts to sink. And luckily Jesus is there to scoop him right up and save him and says, man, you got so little faith. You got so little faith. And, and so the first type of distraction for us can be these bad, as you, if you will, or negative distractions, uh, stuff like a storm, a financial, relational, spiritual, a trial. It could be an addiction. It can be a stronghold, something that is so negative that, that distracts us from the power, purpose, and plan that God has for us. These negative things that can happen, just like Peter turned and he saw the the bad things going on around him and he lost sight, he lost focus and attention on what God was speaking. The second uh, is, is a great example presented by Martha and Mary. You've probably heard the story in Luke chapter 10 in verse 38, and I'll read this one. So turn Luke chapter 10, verse 38. I'm reading out of the NIV. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman uh, named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was, everybody say it, distracted. She was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him, who is Jesus, and asked, Lord, Don't you care? My sister has left me to do all the work by myself. Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about so many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. Turn to your neighbor, say better. Turn 
uh, better, and it will not be taken from her. What is better? Martha is an example, I believe, of a great Christian in this. She, she takes initiative to invite Jesus into her home, into her family. She's hosting him. She's serving him. She's preparing for him. She's doing everything she can to make Jesus and, 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 and invite Jesus and, and make him comfortable and serve him any way she can. So that should be an example of Christianity, right? We need to serve Jesus in every aspect, and yet it distracted her. Something that is positive. She was serving Jesus. That's not, a, that's not a negative. That's not listed as a bad thing. And yet it distracted her from being and sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening and really putting her attention on Jesus. And, and it, I believe that it's possible that we can even let our Christian service to Jesus distract us from Jesus himself. It can distract us sometimes. And, and, and Martha even gets upset with Mary as she's serving, and, and we can get upset. And, 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 but Jesus says, Martha, this, what Mary's doing, listening, giving her full attention to me, that is what is necessary. That can't be taken away from you. This is better. Serving is good, but being with me, your full attention on me, listening to me, is better. It's better, and so I would say, I believe that Jesus gives us a glimpse that he values you listening and being with him full attention more than you serving him. It sounds kind of like me being a heretic up here and I'm gonna be stoned, but uh, I'm not saying, okay, you can go do whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you're reading his word or spending time. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, those things are vital. Serving Jesus is, is so important, but... I believe that being full, listening, full attention on Jesus first then enables us to serve him. Chicken before the egg, not really. Jesus being with him. Religion sometimes can be a distraction. Doing the Christian things. I gotta do everything I'm supposed to do because I'm a Christian. I, I need to check all my boxes off. I need to check all my Devo boxes. Oh, Pastor Luke just said I gotta take this and I'm gonna check it off and just get through it because I don't wanna miss a day. That would be bad. That can be a distraction and, and ultimately distract you from really being with Jesus and putting your full attention, these Christian chores, if you will. And once again, I'm not saying that those things are bad. But what is better, what is better that Jesus presents us with? Putting our full attention, seeking after him, being with him, listening to him. And distractions come in many different ways, shapes, forms. Like I said, it could be these negative things like storms, or it could be positive things like serving. It could be distractions. And a lot of times we, dis we tend to think a distraction, I, I, me personally, I think of a distraction, it's something like, uh, how many of you have seen the movie Up? You know the dog in movie Up, and he's talking, and all of a sudden, squirrel! And he's talking, and then he gets distracted by squirrel, and he's kind of like twitchy and crazy, and that's what I tend to think a distraction is, it just like happens, it's almost like an accident, it's sudden, I don't see it coming. But that's not what a distraction is. And Distractions don't like fall into our lap. It's not this like twitchy thing that all of a sudden it's there and it's a surprise and, and, and just random. If you think about a distraction, you have to choose the distraction for it to be a distraction. It's not random. You choose to look that way. I choose to look at squirrel instead of look at you. I choose to do and focus and put my attention instead of Jesus. That, it, it's not something random. It doesn't, maybe life happens and stuff happens, but ultimately I have a choice. I choose distraction or I choose Jesus. I have a choice. And, and distractions, and I, I pray the Holy Spirit would speak to you even in this moment. Distractions have a way of revealing what we really value, what we really want what we're really most comfortable with. Because if I choose and I go home and I know I haven't spent time in his word and I'm, I'm kind of grumpy and I, I need Jesus and yet I, I would feel more comfortable choosing Netflix because it's easier and I, I'm, I'm showing 
to not only my wife, but to Jesus himself that I value time on Netflix more than I value time with my Savior. It's, these distractions reveal what we love and what we value most. So rhetorical question for you tonight. What things do you choose to focus on that are distractions? Good, bad, ugly. They reveal what you value most and maybe we have to reevaluate our values tonight. Am I, do I truly value the presence of God? You, I'm spe- I feel like I'm preaching the choir a little bit. This is a Sunday night. You've been here this morning, most likely, and you, you're taking that extra step already, and you sh- you're proving to Jesus, man, I want more of heaven. I want more of him. But do we do that in the face of distraction? Do we do that in the face of other things that we can choose? Um, and ultimately, distractions, what they are, distractions are deceptions. Distractions are deceptions. How many of you know what an angler fish is? Have you ever heard of that before? An angler fish, kind of a crazy looking fish. And uh, if you've seen Finding Nemo, it's the fish that is, is way down in the depths to the place where there's no light and it's got a little thing on its head that glows and the thing moves around and it and, and the purpose of that, and it's kind of a scary looking fish. I wish I had a, I had a picture, but I, I forgot to email it to myself. Um, and so it's a scary looking fish, sharp teeth, but in the presence of pure darkness, all the fish see is this little light, this little glowing light. It's like a lure, it's a distraction. And so how the angler fish hunts is it blinks this thing and fish come and they're distracted by it and then it attacks. And, and I believe that Satan uses distractions as deceptions to destroy us. There's a purpose in it. If you think Satan lives and breathes deception, why? Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his goal. That's his purpose. And, and his ultimate goal for us is destruction of our lives. But I, I believe building a little bit off of what Pastor Zach said this morning is that one of his greatest tactics is distraction. And I believe it's a pretty effective tactic. Because if you think about it this way, if I choose to be distracted and I choose to kind of, well, I go to church and I check off my chore list and yeah, I'm serving Jesus and I just am kind of sleepwalking through life until I get to heaven and I'm not really doing any good for his kingdom, but at the same time, I'm not serving Satan. I'm kind of there. And we know that what, what God's view on being lukewarm is, it says it causes him to vomit. He hates it. It disgusts him. And, and so if, if we're not really a threat to Satan's kingdom, then are we really advancing God's kingdom? They're connected. I, I'm not just hot and cold and then it just makes me lukewarm and I'm fine doing what I want. I'm lukewarm and distracted. I'm not doing anything negative, so that's good. Well, then I would say you're not doing anything positive. There's a connection, and, and wh- so why would Satan use distraction? Because, I, I, w- w- let me ask you this, why would Satan attack you when he can distract you? You think of an attack, and I think of my own life, it caused me to come to a crossroads where I absolutely needed God, because I was under attack, and so I turned to him, and I gave it all to Christ. Wouldn't Satan be more effective to say, I'm not gonna attack you, I'm not gonna bring you to your knees, but I'll distract you so you destroy yourself. Then you don't think you're destroying yourself. And you're not even a threat to my kingdom. Satan's saying, you're not a threat to my kingdom when you're distracted. Because you, you think you're just okay. I'm, I'm doing what I should be doing. And I believe that distracted is the most dangerous place to be. Because we think we're good. We're so close, we're almost there, and there's no power in our life. There's no advancing of God's kingdom because I'm distracted from what God wants to do through me and in me. We're doing all the work for him. We're doing all the work for him. I believe, and 
yes, you can question my theology and whatever. I believe sometimes that Satan will even leave us alone when we're distracted. He's like, all right, you're good. I'm, I can leave you over there and you're not a threat to me. I don't have to worry about you. You go on doing your thing. You go on scrolling, scrolling, scrolling and wasting your life. Not getting more of heaven in my workplace, in my relationships, in my community. I'm gonna leave you be because the second I start to attack, you're gonna go, God, I need you. I need more of heaven. See the connection there. I don't want us to be living a distracted and lukewarm life. In Matthew 13, 16, Jesus is talking about the, the parable of the sower and the seed, and he makes this statement in verse 16, blessed, but blessed are your eyes because they see, and blessed are, and your ears because they hear. It is possible to have eyes and not see, and ears and not hear. That is the epitome of lukewarm, of distracted in my opinion. That I have these eyes, I've been given this, and God is showing me things, and he wants me to focus and give him my attention. He's speaking to me, he's trying to get my attention in every single way, but I am distracted. I have eyes, but I don't see. I have ears, but I don't hear. And picking up in verse 22, Jesus is explaining this parable to the disciples, and he says, the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. That to me shows me, all right, I hear God's word, I'm living as a Christian, I've accepted him in my heart, but I'm distracted. I'm distracted by the negative storms, the worries of this life, and I'm distracted by the positives, the lure of wealth, and my comfort, and my screens. So no fruit is produced. Being distracted, living a distracted life, means you are not producing any fruit. You will not and cannot produce fruit when you are distracted. It keeps us, those things keep us from being fruitful, keep us from really having more of heaven in our lives. And if you think about it this way, we can't have more of heaven if we have more of everything else. We cannot have more of heaven if we have more of everything else. Worship team, would you come up? We just give you an opportunity to respond tonight. Did you know that, uh, that being good at multitasking is a myth? It's a myth. Science proves that you cannot be good at multitasking. Why? Because multitasking is being able to give full attention to two things at once. Well, science shows in the brain that if I'm multitasking, I'm doing this over here, and I'm doing this over here, what I call multitasking is actually giving 100% of my attention here, and then I flip to 100% of my attention here. I have 100% of my attention to give, but I can't, I can't split that. It's not physically in my brain, I can't do it. So spiritually, we can't either. There is no light and darkness living in the same house. And so I have 100% of my attention to give, and if I'm not giving it to Jesus, I'm giving it somewhere else. And if I'm giving it somewhere else, I'm not fully giving it to Jesus. There's a story of <laughs> when I was younger, I can't remember if Levi, if you were in, we were in this super ghetto RV back when I was little, and my uncle was driving, and I was sitting on like the console in between the front and the passenger seat, like sitting on it, and uh, our grandpa was kind of sitting back by the little stairs, and, and I remember this his day, I'm watching my uncle, and he was fiddling with something, uh, it was kind of before the big cell phone thing hit, and he was fiddling with something, and he dropped it, and he's driving, and so then he goes, here, <laughs> and goes straight off the road, and luckily it wasn't like this deep ravine, but it was like, boom, everyone's like, whatever, and he stops, and we finally come to a stop, and I'm like, feet up to Jesus, like head stuck down in, the, the, uh, in shotgun. We go back, my grandpa is like folded chair down the stairs, and nobody got hurt, so we were laughing and stuff, but God spoke that to me, because a lot of times we live a Christian life on this highway, distracted driving, and wherever my eyes go, my life goes. Where our eyes go, our lives go. Wherever I put my attention, so I'll be. Spanish philosopher 
uh, Jose Ortega says, tell me to what you pay attention and I will tell you who you are. Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Uh, avoid all perverse talk, stay away from corrupt speech, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet, stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked, keep your feet from following evil. What I choose to focus on, I'm actually choosing to obey that thing. I'm giving that thing power. The, the Latin word for obey, uh, obey dire, or however you pronounce it, uh, it means to give ear. Isn't that significant? Oh, the Latin word for obey actually means to give ear to. What I'm giving my attention to by my ears, that is what I am obeying. And I say, let's give our full attention to Jesus. I want my eyes to be fixed on him, the author and the perfecter of my faith, cut these distractions out and give my full attention to him whether I'm cutting good or bad distractions out that's how I get more of heaven that's how I get more of heaven in my life in my relationships at my, in my house you'll become the loudest voice that you listen to you will become it that's why when we go to camp it's so funny when we go to high school camp the kids absolutely lose their minds when we tell them we're taking their cell phone from the week for the week I mean, some of them like legitimately have like a stroke on the bus, and we take it before they get out of the bus. It's hilarious, I love it. But every single year, year after year, I talk to those same kids that are most freaked out, and they're, they're saying, I don't even know if I want it back. I was so fixed on Jesus this week, and it changed my life. Yeah. Would you stand with me across this place? Jeremiah 29, 11. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. What a promise. Let's seek Jesus with all of our heart tonight. Would you just close your eyes acro across this place? I believe the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you right now, and he's gonna show you something that's been distracting you. Maybe it's a fear, maybe it's a storm, maybe it's Netflix, maybe it's your phone, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a relationship. He's gonna speak to you right now. Jesus, speak. What's been distracting us? And if you're in this place and you say, man, I've never given my full attention to Jesus, and I want that. I want that. Just like Janie's testimony this morning. She finally gave that 1%. It changed everything for her. With nobody looking around, heads, heads bowed, eyes closed, if you're in this place and you say, man, I want to give my full attention to Jesus, would you just raise a hand to heaven? It's just between you and Jesus, absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You can put your hands down. I'm going to pray, and then we're just going to go after him. No distractions. And this is also an application for the second you get home, the second you drive in your car. What thing can I remove and I'm not saying, I love Instagram, but I'm, my challenge is I'm going to put Jesus first. He's going to be the first thing I look at and the last thing that I look at when I go to bed before Instagram, before any of that. So let's just seek Jesus. After I pray, you can respond in any way you see fit. And if you made a declaration saying, I want to give my full attention to Jesus and you, and you want someone to pray for you, just come down to the front. We'd love to. Jesus, we just thank you that you died, you gave your full life, your full attention on saving us so we could have a relationship with you. And I thank you that you want to give more. You want to give more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your, 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 your plan and, your, and more of your purpose in our lives. And I pray, God, that we would cut out these distractions that you spoke to us. We cut out these things, God, that we, we are so focused on. And we would run to you, we'd give all our attention to you. Some of these things, Jesus, we need your help to cut out. We need your help to overcome. We thank you for your power that you set us free. I pray, Jesus, that you just move right now tonight in a new and a fresh way as we would get more of heaven as we put our whole heart, our whole attention, our whole ears, our whole eyes on you tonight. We thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Would you respond?